Hello, my name is John Cawthon. I'm standing in an area which once housed the Alfred P. Murray Federal Building. Where there once stood a regional hub for federal operations in the area, there now stands a national reminder of American tragedy, of strength and sacrifice, and the ability of a city and a nation to move forward. I'm coming to you from the Oklahoma City National Memorial. Following the investigation, the surviving structure was demolished in May of 1995. The original explosion also involved the water resources and a funeral building, all of which would collectively give rise to the 3.3 acre site that would come to be known as the Oklahoma City National Memorial, a place to honor victims, survivors, and rescue workers, and to learn how the violent actions of a few could affect the lives of many. Plans for a memorial started in 1996 when a national and global call was announced for design ideas to be submitted in competition form to a board overseeing the project. The call was answered by 624 entries and eventually leads to the husband and wife architecture team of Hans and Tori Butzer. As you approach the outer gates on the east or west sides of the memorial, you immediately notice the size and scale of the site and how it stands proudly among the towering buildings in the Oklahoma City skyline. The bronze finish of the outer walls, continually in transition in the changing light, shoots forth vertically as if holding back the world and time itself to contain a singular moment. As you pass through these gates of time, you are contained for a few moments between the two parallel walls which make up each gate. The absence of a ceiling and a change to an off-white color in this intermittent space when combined with little horizontal reference, seems to pull the eye upward, lending itself to moments of reflection and allowing for a calming transition from the outside world. Entering the west gate, you see a reflection pool outstretched before you, which leads to the east gate with a large bold 901 embedded towards its top. This causes one to look back towards the west gate, which you have just passed through, noticing the large 903. Looking down the wall, you see how formalism and texture play such a part in the design of the wall as their bases appear to rocket forth along a vertical plane until they reach an awaiting sky. You can also notice the texture changes at the bottom of the wall as countless handprints of children and adults contact the bronze and seem to change it forever. Looking forward, seemingly held in time between these two gates, lies an outstretched reflection pool of black tiles bathed in water. As you step to the pool's edge, you notice it has a Rorschach quality, allowing visitors a personalized version of what this place means to each of them. Flanked to the south, you notice rows of empty chairs symbolizing the 168 persons that died in this tragedy. Nine rows representing the nine floors of the building, each row numbering the amount of lives lost on each floor. The use of symbolism runs deep through the entire site, from the coolness of the vacant bronze chairs that will never be filled, to the unforgettable contrast as larger chairs give way to much smaller ones, reminding us of young lives cut tragically short. Juxtaposed to the north stands the survivor tree, a 90 plus year old elm that like this community and nation weathered the blast and still grow strong. A living tribute and sign of hope, showing that life not only continues, but thrives in the wake of the blast. I chose the Oklahoma City Memorial because it encompasses everything that's great about art. It has symbolism. Hans Butzer, its architect, said when the sun rises directly over the 901 gate, it symbolizes our history before, innocent and optimistic. As it travels directly overhead to 902, the time of the explosion, it reveals and brings to light events that will change us forever. And when it sets behind the 903 gate, it causes us to wonder how we will deal with life tomorrow. You also see strong influences from the Impressionist period and the study of light, from the Baroque period and extreme use of chiaroscuro, and Gothic lighting that builds as it climbs towards the heavens. To say that you should come and see this place is an understatement. What you should do is allow yourself to come and feel this place.